Uh, aloha. Uh, I'd love to sit here and tell you that I'm from three generations of family farmers and all that, but uh, well, I grew up in suburban New York and I'm from three generations of family shoppers. So, um, <laughs> so I approach this whole uh, issue of food self-sustainability uh, with a little bit of a different twist. So um, the topic of the conference today is how can Hawaii feed itself? But I'm going to make this a little more personal and ask how can you or how do you feed yourself? So the problem of dependence upon imported, imported foods and fuels, but foods, is a large macro level problem. And we've been grappling with all kinds of potential solutions to that for the last two days. Um, but this is a problem that can be solved relatively easily at the individual level. So some of you may know that last year I ate only Hawaii Island grown foods for three months, as Nancy just said. Um, and so in preparation for this food summit, I once again started eating only locally grown foods, and I've only been eating locally grown foods for the last three weeks in preparation for this summit. So <laughs> this body is 99% guaranteed import free, okay? <laughs> or your money back. <laughs> so um, this time I've been a little bit, uh, you can go to the next slide, this time I've been a little bit more relaxed about it actually. You can go all the way through this slide. Um, I did eat some Molokai sweet potatoes and I used uh, some non-native uh, oils. Um, and the other thing I did is I didn't turn this into a huge food acquisition project. When I did this for the first time, I tackled it like a project, and I made sure I sourced all my foods and knew where it was coming from, knew where I was getting it, and you know, made a big deal about it. This time, I did not make a big deal about it. I just, next slide, I just went on with my normal life, and I just shopped at the places that I usually shop, and that is Kekela Farms up in Waimea, uh, Foodland, and KTA. I mean, that was pretty much it. Sometimes I went down um, Saturday mornings under the banyan tree in Javi, but um, I, I didn't have to alter my food acquisition at all, but what I did alter was what I bought, okay? So I only just made the choice to eat locally grown foods and to buy those. Um, however, I did make a rice exception, and the reason I made a rice exception was just so I can say this, if you can go to the next slide. Okay, oh, yeah, that we used to grow a lot of rice here in Hawaii. So, um, and you go to the next slide. The Hawaiian people here obviously lived without rice, without wheat, without corn, and uh, however, most of us today can hardly imagine living without these things. Um, my, only rela my own relationship to food is such that I often want to eat Okay, so what I want to get at here is basically um, the relationship between our brains and our relationship with food. So um, I am often wanting to eat things that aren't good for me, that I don't really need. So when I'm asking the question, can Hawaii Island feed itself, I'm also asking myself, can I feed myself with what grows here? Not just physically, but can I adjust my, adjust my habits, can I adjust my tastes to what's healthy for me and for the environment? And the answer to that for me is yes and no. So um, I've been able to make some long-term changes. We, all of the produce we buy is produced locally. That's a long-term change I've been able to make. Um, but between focusing on my two rather extreme experiments, I've noticed that that I can slip and go to the next slide, please. So, but at least I'm into health food, okay? I am a health food person. And you could tell that because uh, we buy things like organic raisin bran and um, Altadena yogurt and Annie's macaroni and cheese. If I wasn't a health food person, I'd be buying Kraft macaroni and cheese. <laughs> so um, this is the recycling from just two weeks of normal family living. There's three people in my family. And this doesn't even represent all of the stuff we had to throw away, like milk cartons, you know, fish that comes on styrofoam and <laughs> all whatever else, you know. So next slide, please. 
Okay, um, now, this is um, my little thing about the supermarket, so click once. If you look at your regular supermarket and the health food store, you'll notice that about that much of it is produce, and then the rest of it is a health and landfill problem, okay? <laughs> so, if you really pay attention when you go to the food store, um, and if you're eating only locally grown foods and eating what's good for you, you'll be doing all your shopping from the produce section and none from the health and landfill section, okay? Okay, next slide. Okay, this is something interesting. I thought that was really interesting. You know, there's been all these articles flying around the internet lately. I'm sure a lot of you have seen them about food miles and people saying, oh, you know, sometimes uh, imported foods are actually better from a food miles perspective. Well, this is just a little bit on, on something like that. So this is a study by the Leopold Center for Sustainable Agriculture at Iowa State University, and they calculated food miles for multiple ingredient food products, okay? So in this case, we're talking about yogurt. So um, because the strawberries have to travel, they got their strawberries from California, from Florida, sugar from somewhere up further than that, and from sugar beets, and they actually had the, the dairy where they produced was all in the same place. So, um, but anyway, there was uh, 2,216 food miles inherent in one cup of yogurt, okay? And so when we think about then something like that and shipping in here is just unbelievable. So food miles, global warming, that kind of thing bothers you. Um, stay away from processed foods and multiple item processed foods. Okay, next slide. So most of our produce, we think most of our things come on a barge, but the fact of the matter is uh, a lot of stuff comes on a barge, but a lot of our, our food comes on airplanes. And this is just one little example. Um, this is a pepper, it's called Sun Select Peppers. They're available in our local food land in Waimea. They're greenhouse grown in Canada. They're trucked to San Francisco. They take an airplane to Kona. Then they get trucked to a warehouse. Then they get trucked to the food store. And that's a total of about 3,200 miles, which is one well-traveled pepper, okay? <laughs> so next slide, and by the way, these peppers from Foodland cost $5.99 a pound, these very peppers. These peppers on the right come from Kekela Farms. They're $5 a pound, and they're awesome, okay? <laughs> Delicious. Okay, next slide. So I, this is going to be a little tricky, you're clicking, but... Um, so, okay, the joy of gardening, Jeff as ta was talking about. And I've been talking primarily about purchasing local foods, but I know this is the Home Food Producer panel, so I'm going to share a little bit about my own home food production experience. This is the garden that I planted. That's not really what my garden looks like. Okay, next. <laughs> then the pigs decimated my garden. Next. Then my neighbors decimated the pigs. Next. Then, the, then I replanted my garden. Then the chickens decimated my garden. Next. Then my dog decimated my chickens. Next. I was down to one chicken. Next. But despite all of this adversity, I managed to grow and eat my own taro. So I was really happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, actually, I'm so inspired by Barbara Kingsolver's book that I'm going to write my own book. It's called Dead Animal Limp Vegetable. OK, so uh, next slide, please. So as you know, October is Eat Hawaii Island Grown Month. So um, I, if you know that, Slow Foods Hawaii is sponsoring Eat Hawaii Island Grown Month. This is the month of October right now. So take the Eat Local Challenge. You can be strict and eat no imports. You can allow a few imported items. Next. You could purchase only Hawaii Island Grown Fruits and Vegetables. But I really encourage you to have your own experiment at some level because it's been so interesting for me. This is my final slide. Next. Um, well, I've lost weight, okay? You can lose a lot of weight eating only local foods diet. This is no joke. Next. Well, I met Richard Spiegel when I was interviewing him for an article that I was writing, and that turned into a fabulous new job for me, okay? And then I got asked to do, write more articles and speak here to you today, became a writer and a speaker. So. Eating local foods has brought me fame, fortune, weight loss. It could do the same for you. I encourage you to go for it.